Welcome back, my friends, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and right now it is October 5th, 1947, in which we've got a couple focuses to go through, but right now, I just decided to go to war with the Third International, or at least just Suriname, just because, well, I think we really should be the masters of the Americas, and right now, actually, Russia, the Moscow Accords, went to war over Turkey, of all things, and they are fighting the Third International too, so I figured, you know what, maybe it's a good idea and time to go to war, so I've literally just gone to war, and I've you know, made, balance the divisions out a little bit more between the Third International and the Moscow Accords, so it is what it is, whatever, I don't really care, because at least in late game Hearts of Iron 4, if you don't start deleting everyone's divisions, including our own, I've already gotten rid of another army, um, it's going to be a bad time. Regardless, we've got some couple comments to go through, but some focuses that I've done off screen that I should, uh, let you all know about, let you all know about, and we got, we cremated the clan. The uh, certain clan that has three Ks in it has been a stain on America since its creation. It is a travesty such a group exists in Christ's kingdom in the first place. That is why our most trusted officials have devised a plan to be set in motion that would not only destroy the clan, but cremate it. Which we did, and we removed the orange menace, in which I also did puppet the opposition. When Regent Carroll first assumed control over the American Union state, he single-handedly transformed the corrupt and heretical Republican nation into a constitutional monarchy with himself as Regent. However, he made the mistake of allowing those in opposition to the Holy American League to remain not only legalized, but within the halls of Congress. However, a solution to this prog problem has finally materialized. By applying pressure via the Knights of Columbus and empowering the right people, we can effectively puppet the opposition. Not only will this give us an even more free hand in a religious reconstruction of America, America or righteous reconstruction. But when the people see us working side by side with those who oppose a rule, our popularity among them can only increase a win-win situation, which is great. And we're currently doing common man integralism. A truly great society is a feudal hierarchy, with the aristocracy on the top and the peasants at the bottom. When a justified takeover was achieved, we were able to integrate our feudal reforms into peasant American life. This common man integralism, as it's being referred to, has seen success with people being content with a guaranteed job and pay, especially in our new America. Absolutely, and our Navy is looking pretty mighty. Pretty darn mighty. And here we go. I should have already done that one off screen. Which the, the Third International will probably call all of their little buddies in. And, well, that's a lot of dudes that we're probably going to fight. Hopefully, they'll join. Hopefully, they'll join. Oh, I guess we're fighting Suriname and the United Communes of Brazil. Uh, really wasn't expecting Brazil too much, but whatever. Oh, Australia's and Confederation are by themselves, which is fine. And I still want to go to war with these guys, but... Uh, actually, we're at war. 185 days. My goodness, that's a long time. And what else? Uh, well, we'll go Suriname. Um, wait, would you look at that? Convoys, love it. Uh, Russia, no. We've got plans for you, Russia. We do have some serious planarinos. In the meantime, come from Georgetown, and we might have a good time at. Uh, don't really want to sacrifice these guys. You, you guys can head down there though. JFK is kind of hanging out. And the rest of our armies are just kind of stationed in America, willing and waiting to defend its boulders from enemy presence. Please tell me we're going to actually go to war with the Third International. Oh, Special Forces are nice. We have 100% uh, party popularity, which means that only happens when God is leading us, so. Ah, there we go. Now we're fighting even more people. Uh, nope, 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 nope. And it's... Whoa. Sleeping American giant is awakened. It's hard to fail, but it's worse. Never have to try to succeed. Whoa. Oh, yeah, we're fighting Brazil. Nice. Good luck, guys. You're probably going to need it as we're moving into the jungles of Brazil, which is going to suck. Czechoslovakian Union. That's fine. Um, Where's Brazil here? Oh, there goes those guys. 18,000. They have up to 64 divisions here, which is not too bad. But as you can tell, even like after I deleted some divisions, I destroyed 60 Mexican divisions too. Woo! It's still pretty laggy. It's got that lag. But maybe with the holy blessing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we all lag less. Maybe. Just maybe. Um, we're moving pretty swiftly into here though. Oh, baby. Yeah, go into there. Yes, yeah, it's definitely... Yeah, this is why I usually just, like, straight up annexing, like, enemies after the wars in Kaiserreich and Kaiser Redux, just to avoid even more lag. I'd rather have everyone be under us than and have, like, literally no stability than this. Even though... Oh, Warbreak... Uh, we don't really need that, do we? Yeah, I guess we could use that. Um, Might as well. But usually, isn't there a little of... Oh, I guess political actions. Once you're below 50% stability, you can get more weakly stability that way. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd rather have zero stability and have like less lag. I'll be honest. But hey, we can beat up the enemy ships. That's the most important part, right? I love naval combat. Uh, you guys are protecting the other coast down there. I definitely don't want to do this, but... This is a, the thickest thing we've got, and we got to go to Cape Verde Plain. we got to protect our coast and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just so we can start you know, convoy raiding, destroying more enemy ships, navally invading. Ah, uh, common man integralism. So I think my plan for this... Oh, well now... Every, why is everyone coming to the war now? What the heck, guys? Come on. Uh, is for me to take out all South America. And then, then off screen, I'll just probably just launch into Africa, which is going to be a slog fest. And then I'll show you the defeat of the Third International, and then we'll go to war with the Eurasian bloc, as well as the Chinese. Like, I still deleted some of the divisions here. I deleted some of the divisions here, too, just to help it not lag as much. Mm, you know what? I just might make this a one, two, three, four, five way world war. That might not be a bad idea. But I, I remember someone commented in one of my uh, videos or my Discord server, I said, Maccabee plan? Is that the wrong way to say it, but to expand our faith and enact our plans, we need conversions for, and conversions, we need money and monetary aid. Our leader has already signed in a new system known as the Maccabi Plan, Maccabee Plan, to not only aid these conversions, but also give them monetary primacy over these false Christian groups. Ugh, we don't like false Christian groups. It's not persecution, it's just rectification and re -education. You know, you know, good stuff. You know, the normal good stuff. Oh, yeah. Look, the, the, why? Why does Africa have to be liberated? Why? We're all one and the same. We don't need a liberation except liberation of Christ's good and holy word. Oh my goodness. Now this is actually a good way to kill off a lot of enemy divisions too, but whatever. Come on, can we just please go to war with Portugal? Portugal. Not Portugal. We love Portugal. We actually, we made them join uh, our faction, but they're dead anyways. But I want to go to war with these guys. Oh, wait. oh yeah. Okay, I ask. I ask. I pray and we shall receive. Look at that. The Lord does many various blessings in disguise. Ah. Oh. Also, with some of our, you know, national spirits here, let's slow it down so maybe it'll lag a little bit less. Uh, Catholic America, we have Christ the King for more division, attack, and defense, plus 15% attack is nothing to laugh at. Uh, new treaty is not bad. I still don't understand why it's 56% non-core manpower. You get 10% even more attack from the Knights of Columbus. Um, foreign lifeline, which we're trying to get rid of. Maccabee plan. Oh, we're trying to enable Bay, but it's not working out so well for us right now. Look at all these convoys. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, goodbye, Norwegian Union. Yeah, the Russians are doing... Yeah, that's kind of a standstill a little bit. Yeah, Norway lost, but... Most of Europe is just kind of hanging out. So overall, not too bad. And we're still doing okay here. Uh, we lost some of these naval invasions, which kind of sucks. But hopefully these guys will be able to move through pretty darn quickly, hopefully. Now supplies are going to suck, but that's why we do this. Uh, you can, you guys can eventually do that. Oh, watch out, we're fighting Iraq. America v, v or versus Iraq. Who's gonna win? I don't know. Depends who has, uh, weapons. Especially of a, a nuclear type. Oh, boy. Alright, not bad. And we're gonna grab next... Eh, that's not really worth doing. Let's grab some of this to make our special forces even more special. I love special, special forces. Convoys go boom. Uh, there's no point in even reading these. There's just convoys. There's a lot of convoys dead. A lot more convoys dead. Ah, uh, this is how you kill enemies' armies. Just sink the convoys. Very nice, very nice. I did throw on more planes for each of our armies, too, so... We should be doing actually pretty darn well around here. Uh, no... But even though you, they still need air bases and stuff. Which makes sense. My goodness. Hopefully this levels up our guys quite a bit. Ah, another carrier. I love it. You guys don't have... You do have a carrier here, so actually... Um, actually, do you guys have a carrier? No, you don't. You're literally all just screens. Don't get out of the battle, please. There you go. There you go. My goodness. Look at all the death in the sea. I love it. Yeah, who cares about land battles when you have, you know, convoy raids and stuff? It's just a little bit of a slog here. And my main goal is just to do focuses. Oh, actually, let's go to war economy. Well, after going to war economy, this should look a little better, right? Uh, final total 150 rounded up. Okay, now, well, maybe I shouldn't have deleted those divisions, but I think we have enough divisions in the game. Maybe except for tanks, maybe? Because I did convert these to modern tanks, which we don't have enough modern tanks, but I don't really care. Yeah, we're only out 1,200 modern tanks. Anti-tank, I don't believe anti- I really don't believe in anti-tank for most campaigns, unless it's mandatory that divisions have to use it, so. 
like in TNO or whatever. So, uh, y'all. I'm actually going to tell y'all to come down this way instead. So, um, you know what? In this campaign, we might just jump around a little bit more. Or at least this episode. Oh, God. oh, oh hold on. Oh, oh, this is so nice. The, De the Battle of Demara Plain. Oh, oh, yeah. I love Chilean ships at the bottom of the sea. Oh, it makes me so happy. Mmm. If you'd like to, you can go and repair. Actually, does William Halsey Jr. have any upgrades? No, I would want him to get iron sides, but he's not there yet. And you guys are just kind of hanging out, defending our other coast, so. Yeah, I can get down here, too. Okay, get down here, too. Alright, we have ten, really, so... Okay, that's good. Ah, yes. Raid, raid, raid. I love it. God, you know, I don't know anyone else that loves the naval combat as much as I do. It just... It's not even... You don't even have to know that much. You just put upgrades on ships, because the AI never builds upgrades on their ships. Almost never. I've never really seen them... Then again, you can't really tell what upgrades enemies have put on their ships anyways. Unless you tab over and look at their ships. But they pretty much never do it. So, and when you do your naval doctrine with that, it just, it's a smackdown. A whole smacky smacky. That's a heavenly smack, as some might say. Oh, what's happened over here? Convoys, thank you. Marines, Polar, last time you were a little disappointing, but uh, you might be redeemable. How many have we killed in the ocean? Now, it looks impressive, but you gotta f remember that the Russians are killing them, too. Well, we've killed off about 300,000 Brazilians. Not bad. Um, wow. We've killed off 100,000 Frenchies. Alright. Persia? Not really too much for us. Uh, anything else? Not too... Oh, hello. Alright, yep. Very cool. Very cool. Uh-oh. Oh, we also playing. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, we also playing. Whatever. That's fine. Just lots of convoys. They go boom, boom. They go dead, die. Oh, hello. Oh, the, the. Oh, wow. This is why we need nukes. Streamline line, very good. As, as you can tell, I mean, it's almost 48. Like I almost never play up until this point, but because this is Kaiser Reich and it's a meme mod, which it makes it. Oh, hold on, crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, I saw a carrier bomber was lost. I'm like, oh, is that a carrier that we lost? It wasn't. Okay, phew. Thank goodness. Oh, my goodness. But, uh, yeah. Like, I, I'm gonna still delete more divisions. Because, you know, the AI always makes more and more and more divisions, so. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh-oh. Now, don't lose too many guys here. If you'd like to help out here so we can get these guys some more supplies, that'd be really good. Oh, you sucking. You sucking a fat one. That is not good, my friend. It's not good. We're doing quite a bit of damage, as you can tell, from, uh, hold on, that thing. 12.5, ain't too shabby. Ain't too great, but ain't too shabby. Alright. The Maccabee plan. Oh, they, they're almost running out of manpower. That's good. So, I wanted to show you what we're at. I think from here on out, I'm going to jump over to maybe when we invade... Or finish off South America and invade Africa. We'll see. But let's read a few more focuses, shall we? Promote the aristocratic ideals. The loss of millions of souls from this world to heck because of sin has always angered the faithful Catholic. Debates in once quiet halls of the Holy American League are erupting and are demanding that Philip find a solution to the darning of America to heck. Philip's solution, a creation of a new class of Americans that will help ensure the preservation of the holiness of America. God bless America. And reward the Catholics. The first step for the implementation of the Mac Maccabee plan is to determine who is a true citizen and deserving of the promise of lower taxes. They must be able to trace their ancestry to Catholic immigrants or have converted to the faith and become a faithful, mass-attending, rosary-praying Catholic. Man, I've... I have my rosary right on my desk here from like when I was in sixth grade. But Catholic education. Public schools have been the standard for common education since its inception. The education of youth into good, faithful Catholics is essential to the League's long life, and to do that, we should fund catechism, classes across the nation in public schools, introspection into the secrets of Christianity and Catholicism will stop orangist thought and cavalier identity. America was once a dominion of the British Empire, which has spread the vile Anglican faith across the world, however, before Britain was completely overtaken by the satanic tendrils of Protestantism. She suffered a horrid civil war between those who stood for God, king, and country, and those evil men who had allowed themselves to be corrupted by Protestantism and the so-called Enlightenment. Those who fought for the king and his attempts to allow the free exercise of the one true faith over time adopted the term cavalier to describe themselves. A cavalier identity, one of the gentlemanly conducts, stands for God and country, is an identity that a government must push the American people to adopt. 
By extolling these men as heroes, not only can we begin the process of creating a true cavalier identity among our people, we can also paint the Canadians and the Royalist exiles as usurpers, giving both the American Revolution and our instating of a monarchy more legitimacy in the eyes of the people, additionally with ethical economics. With our control unchallenged and Catholics being empowered, we are almost ready to achieve total economic independence and finally rid ourselves of foreign lifelines. However, a debate has sprung up that has reached the highest echelons of our government. Christian socialist Dorothy Day has outlined her plan for what she calls distributism, which has garnered support from Catholic workers but has been compared to cynicalism. Al Smith, on the other hand, has outlined his Christian capitalism plan, which is exactly what it sounds like. This plan has garnered support as well but has been compared to the vile liberalism that destroyed old America. The debate has reached our great leader himself, but the question is, what will he choose? And which we will probably go back to that event, and I'll show you what that is about, but Catholic Unions. Christian socialist Dorothy Day has offered her aid in setting up Catholic Unions, which will be under our guidance. They will promote the faith while also making sure that Catholic controls in the workforce remains unchallenged. This plan has already been improved by our leader, despite comparisons to cynicalism, with blur the lines. The separation of church and state was perhaps the greatest crime of the so-called Enlightenment since the collapse of the Roman Empire. When Holy Mother Church single-handedly rebuilt society from the ground up, church and state were intertwined. In order to finally sound the death blow of Enlightenment thought within America, the church will finally be at the head of America and America... America Sanctus. Many doubted our leader. They falsely believed he would end up like others before him, but he proved them wrong. He has saved America from heresy and has truly made America an unblemished sacrifice for the Lord. Vivat Christus Rex. And another comment. Uh, had I chosen earlier, when we could have chosen like, who would be you know the ruler of America, whether we have a king or put it uh, a Stuart on the throne. If we went with that, with the Stuart on the throne path, we could have become the Jacobite Kingdom of America and would have been able to reclaim the British throne anyways. So I... I'm not going to promise it, but a lot of people want me to go down that route eventually, and maybe we will in a future campaign, but I'll see you in just a little bit. Forging good out of evil. None can deny that the continued prosperity of a Christian nation lies in its education, a means to unify the good people of America from the cradle to the grave, deciding to mimic the Portuguese model. The American school, school system <clears throat> shall be rebuilt from the ground up. Every school shall adopt the institution of Catholic schools for boys and girls, and the veins similar schools present, present in New England. Further, Catholic priests and ministers shall serve as principals in half the faculty, while the nunnery makes up the other half, and all religious services and rites observed by the Catholic Church shall be observed by students. For these students, scholarships for theology, sociology, and philosophy can shall be encouraged to strengthen the moral fiber of the American citizen. Charles Cochran and Philip Carroll's radio broadcast will be mandatory listening for young students in Catholic schools, and finally all forms of racial segregation in schools will be abolished by both the state and the church. These are just the start of the League's educational reforms. And while it will obviously take time for the new teachings to take root, Philip Carroll and the League are confident that the next generation of American Catholic youth shall be the ones to see America flourish, both on the world stage and beyond, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. we got more political power that we don't really need. Day and Smith Confrontation. As the Holy American League continues its project of breathing life into the American economy, a raucous debate has surfaced within the League as to the specific plan for revamping the American financial sector. The origin of the schism within the League stems from ex-socialist activists Dorothy Day and venerable New York Governor Al Smith, both of whom still continue to work for the betterment of America despite their necessary alignment with the comparatively extreme integralists within the League. Day, whose mere presence within the League has been a point of contention since its foundation, argues for transitioning the American economy to the model of distributism a communal form of economic decentralization based on Judeo-Christian values of sharing and charity, where the country's production will be widely owned by American populace instead of by, pri by private enterprise. Naturally, such a measure of... <clears throat> Collectivization has scared the pants off many of the more moderate members of the League, Al Smith, chief among them. Smith champions American capitalism and argues that a free market is of vital importance to the American economy, and even invoking Charles of Carrollton's role in the Revolutionary War as a principle against in favor of the preservation of private enterprise for the sake of American prosperity. Not wanting to be mistaken for as showing favoritism to either side, Philip Carroll's delegated the decision of which economic model to adopt to the dictation of Father Charles Cochran, whose enmity for the leftist day and liberalist Smith is well known and would likely favor whichever economic plan he felt would be the most practical for America's future. I urge you and challenge you to draw the money changers from the temple. Oh, look at that. Dorothy Day for ec Economics Minister. So, Military Staff Government uh, Minister of Interior. Dorothy Day is already here as a reformer. Uh, Fulton Sheen, as well as Charles Coughlin, of course. There's no need for communitizing all the factories in the fields. Once we get more, we lose daily political power, more resource efficiency gain, more construction speed, and less military factory speed. I personally prefer this one. Just because I like the infrastructure speed and construction or civilian factory stuff. Even though you do get a plus 4% regardless to everything. Which is good because I'm building up a lot of roads. We're building up a lot of radio stations and 
bases and stuff like that. So overall, realistically, the construction speed for this one is a little better. And as much as we want this one, you know, it is what it is. Now, whenever I play as the, what is it, the, with the Stuart throne, you know, please remind me. We'll do the other option. I think for this campaign, we'll go no need for communizing all the factories in the fields. So we'll go with this one. But when I play as the one that we, which we go for the Stuart's Throne, let us go for Dorothy Day. Please, please remind me of that. If we can. If we can do that. So there's no need for that. And now I'll just change. No, Dorothy Day is still here. Uh, Charles Cochran. Uh, well, let's give, maybe give it a day. Uh, so we're all, we just went to war with Argentina because, well, Argentina needs to go bye-bye. No, it hasn't changed yet. And we still have no tank designer, which is, you know, whatever. Uh, additionally, uh, apparently the Russian state took out the Union of Britain. They aren't able to take out, and they're actually somewhat losing to the Communist of France and the Continental Europeans, but Union of Britain? Well, the Russian... Okay, the Union of Britain's coming back in Bristol. But I will see you once South America is done and accomplished, as well as invading Africa, as well as parts of Europe. And off screen, I think I'm just going to straight up annex Mexico, just because I want them to be gone and fully under us and even though we can't lower their autonomy level i think it's time we should just straight up annex them and include our holy mexican brother and sisters into our empire america sanctus in the beginning god created the heaven and earth and earth was shapeless and formless from the earth came the land untapped and untamed and to that untamed land came the exiles men and women from a land of sodomites of vice and corruption and disease and god granted the land to the exiles and the exiles took the lamb from the land and shaped it and formed it and its form was that of the creator in god's image and god was elated and God blessed the newly formed lamb. And he blessed it with the fruits of God's empire. He blessed him with prosperity, with great monolith and populous metropole. He blessed him with mighty warriors, with brotherhoods among brotherhoods of holy crusaders whose hearts were as righteous as their swords. And he blessed them with a leader. And the leader was an apostle, a disciple, a teacher, and a shepherd. And God blessed the shepherd and granted him wisdom and zeal. And the granting, the shepherd became the archregent. And the archregent was exultant, resplendent. And was he in the dress and garb befitting a lord? For he was no longer lord, for he is of the lord. For he is of the prophet, the arch-regent of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it was that the arch-regent, the arch-regent, who was of the prophet, the arch-regent, who, who was a prophet. And the prophet cast all his all-seeing gaze across the land, once shapeless and formless, now made whole to the people of the land. The tired and the poor now made to be awake and prosperous. And as he looked up upon his people and his land, the prophet heard the word of God, and it was the voice of the prophet, the prophet who was a vessel of God, and the vessel said the word of God, and the word of God from the words of the prophet spoke, and the words were, let there be empire. And so it was. Amen. And will be known as the empire of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Unfortunately, Philip Carroll dies, but the wicked regent, Philip Carroll. And we become... A new Charlemagne. Look at that flag. Empire of the Lady of Guadalupe with Jesus Christ as a king. And Regent Philip Carroll. Oh my goodness. But that opens up a few new focuses, hopefully. But we get the death eventually, so. Uh, for now, I would like to read some of these ones over here that we still haven't done. So, like, new weapon designs. When the M1 Garand managed to see us through the Civil War, its flaws were as noticeable when it was adopted as they are now, however. With the criticism we have gathered during the Civil War, we have contacted the original designer, and he's assured us that by re redesigning the barrel, ga gas cylinder, front, sight, assembly, he will make the gra Garand even more reliable and deadly. With a rebuild industrial military industrial complex. With most of the military industrial complex in the east, the Civil War devastated the old munitions and weapon factories that made up America's pre-war industry as it became high value targets for bombings and our preferred hiding spot of persistent enemy defenders. And we wish to be ready for the next war. Investing into rebuilding the military industrial complex is one of our priorities, as well as Colombia needs you. The figure of Colombia, a woman wearing an American flag gown and a Phrygian hat, as a personification of the ideals of freedom and pursuit of liberty where we fought so hard to achieve. With the tyrant overthrown and the radicals put down, the service of the American people to Colombia is not yet over. War looms in the horizon, and only the brave men of America can protect her and her nation from tyranny and war bonds. Funding the war effort will require more than victory gardens and volunteerism. Liquid assets are in short supply, especially with our ec economic programs ongoing. We can capitalize on public trust and implement war bonds, as most other free nations do. Now, for this one, we need to stabilize following the death of the Auk Regent Carol, and we do ha are winning. We are winning. Um. Most of our naval battles, but it seems kind of weird that we can't wait to wait for this. Oh boy, I wonder when he's going to pass away, which is not very good to ask for when our regent was going to die, but would you look at that? We lost a ship, actually, in exchange for 12 enemy ships. Beautiful, beautiful, and as you can tell, we're trying to navally invade all sorts of different people here. 
Hopefully we can do well and invade Africa, which is not going to be fun or easy, but it is what it is. And let the tanks, well, let them roll out with not much organization. That's probably a bad thing to do. But that's alright, since we did unify all of South America, and like I said, we did annex Mexico. We might take out the island of Hispaniola, but we'll see. Uh, oh no, the death of Ark Regent Philip Acosta Carroll. Following a nearly two month long fight with influenza, Ark Regent Philip Acosta Carroll, father of the Empire of Our Lady of Guadalupe, and the Apostle of America has died. A funeral mass is planned to be prayed by the newly invested Bishop Fulton Sheen, the late Regent's most trusted, confident, and personal confessor in the coming days. Words of sorrow and condolences to the American people have already flooded in from around the world, most notably from the Holy Father himself, who is greatly saddened at the death of one of the Church's most faithful sons. Talks for the canonization of Philip Carroll has allegedly already begun. On the grand scale, the death of the Ark region could not have come at a worse time. The empire, bolstered by the recent conquest of Canada and Mexico, ah, it's breaking apart of the seams in the U.S. prosper. Oh, proper. The people, although now majority Catholic, are growing tired of the authoritarian rule of the Holy American League, as well as the ever-listening ears of the Inquisition. In former Canada, protests by the Anglican population are growing in size and popularity, with some Canadians even forming militias to oppose their rule. In Mexico, the great patchwork of alliances that kept the nation together have been broken, causing any notion of order to be thrown out of the window. While the Mexican people support us, the near-total anarchy within the country causes that support to me next to nothing. It, if it wasn't enough, the death of Ark Regent has caused the big tent nature of the Holy American League to come into plain view. Distinct political groups led by the most popular or most powerful figures within the League have come into full view as each faction stakes its claim to be the successor of Carol, unless we deal with it soon. It is likely the Empire will collapse as quickly as it was created. The nation mourns. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. Wow, if you want to read about all that, go right ahead. Oh no. The Holy American League. But Jesus Christ is still the king. Hopefully we can at least fade somewhere and start pushing out. <gasps> if you want to read about this, please go ahead, in which we will read up next. To, in order to prevent a power struggle within the Holy American League and a breakdown of order in the wider empire, the leadership of the League is called into session the Second Holy American League Congress and tasked with shaping the future of the Empire. Oh, I actually landed successfully. Look at that. I don't want to put too many guys here. Because Africa... Well, it's Africa. And that's all I'm going to say. Because we love Africans. Oh, wow, that's a lot of lag. But, we prefer full conquest of Africa. Let it be, let it be. As the Beatles did say, let it be. Even though they did not form as a rock group yet in this timeline, it is what it is. Oh, this is such a bad idea. Such a bad idea. Why do we, why do African nations want to be liberated? They just needed to serve, like, other people. Okay, never mind. Um, don't quote me on that one. But, Jesus Christ, like, they don't need independence. Oh, we got them, look at that. Um, maybe we can capitulate another country, too. So, um, I want to wait and do some of the focuses together before we do too much else. So, yeah. Because the goal is to capitulate the third international by the end of this episode. That is really my goal here, so. And I did move my subs around to this side. Ah, uh, subby, my little subby chubbies. It looks like the third international is not taking uh, no for an answer uh, for the conquest of uh, the British Isles. They're coming back. Oh, wow, look at that. They're even coming over here, too. So they're reinvading. Yet, France proper is getting invaded. Oh, the German Union is doing pretty darn well. But we must do the Second Congress of the Holy American League. Oh, no. Much worries are abounding and astounding. Oh, no. Can we actually... Oh, we might actually be able to invade. Look at that. And we actually have our divisions here. Look at that, too. That's probably a really bad idea, but whatever. Spread out, spread out. I know it's bad around here, guys. It's going to get a lot worse, but just keep spreading out. Like a disease. To Morocco. Because we are cutting down a lot of Icelandic convoys. Wow. Um, honestly, not too bad. The Russian state, I mean, it's got to be just incredibly bloody between all these peoples. Alright, at this point. Get the Marines out of here. We're going to keep invading other places, so... Well, if we can invade. I guess you guys can come from here. I'm going to invade Casablanca, maybe? And you guys can come here and invade... Right there, maybe? Go whenever you can. I know supplies going to be really bad around here, so... So if you guys showing up here, how about you just come back down here? Hold. Because you can really only afford one army down here like this. No question about it. Oh, Senegambia. Thank you, Senegambia, for capitulating. Beautiful. Oh, the Portuguese Empire, huh? 
Very good. All right, Marines. Oh, you already ready to go. Look at that. Look at all them convoys. Love it. All right, the Marines are doing a great job. I love the Marines. And even the tanks. And I did change around Earl Longbeard because he's an amphibious person. He's an invader, na naval liaison. It was just more fitting that he would do this. Uh, cool. Hey, look, divisions. Kill them. Enemy divisions, I should really say. Uh, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Come on, guys. Land, 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 land. Oh, wait. You're going up there. Okay. Rocket engines are nice. Improved rocket engines. Why not? Ah, good. Let's grab some of this. Elite forces, shall we? We shall. Adrar. Adrar. Oh, there's some guys on there, too. That's not good. Uh, yeah, Mr. Courtney Hodges. Wow, look at that lag. Oh, my goodness, that's so bad. Wow. Ah, yeah, that's very good. Casablanca. Um, uh, Gift of Fez and Oja. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that, obviously, but whatever. What about Sayuta? And we should have the focus on relatively soon. Which would be a very, 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 very good thing. If you can kill the enemies, please do so. God would want it. These are not humans. These are uh, demons, we'll call them. Yeah, we got we got to take a look at that. I want to capitulate Morocco first before we take a look at uh, how well they're doing over there. Link up, link up. Ah, I just go there. I'll give you that first. Yeah, a few divisions up here, huh? Seriously, how are they not dead yet? Feels like we're about to get encircled too, so. Okay, there we go. Alright, so let's take a look at the casualty so far. Uh, 4.63, wow, versus 19 million. Holy crap! Wow. I mean, they don't have a lot of divisions, but neither do these guys, so. 1.58, yeah, maybe. Mm, I might have to balance that out a little bit more. The Second Congress of the Holy American League. St. Mary's City is a popular site for the truly devoted Catholic population of the nation, but more so today as its streets are bustling with outside activity and traffic as everyone from reporters to student field trips are converging to see the Second Congress of the Holy American League. Everyone from the Holy Inquisition's representatives and their own security forces to moderate and reformist politicians who are keen to see what the chances of representing their factions in the Congress will be. The crowds are being slowly vented through strict security checkpoints manned by the Army and Inquisition so that the assembly goes as planned. Reporters and crowds supporting their preferred faction are all eagerly wait to see the representatives arrive, all the while the Knights of Columbus stand sentinel on the steps of the Congressional building. We shall soon have a new Arc Regents to rule in place of Christ the King, God willing. Good, God speed and good luck. Oh, look at that. Another task force? Good. I love blowing up any task forces. Good. Oh, makes you feel alive when they go kaboom. Does it not? Alright, so I can actually have you guys back up here now. The goal is over here. And we shall do next. Oh, oh, crow. We're going to have a lot of comments about that. Or not comments, but like this stuff to read very soon. Get a few days while the events are starting to pop up a little bit more and more and more and more. Oh, hello. What are you guys doing here? Andre. You're going to lose your ships, Andre. Hey, look. No, more task forces. Any more ships? Yes. There we go. Hit them hard. Hit them heavy. Uh, I guess we'll build, rebuild the military industrial complex. Malian commune, the goodbye. Yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good. Totally good. Now the convoys go bye bye. Go, Corny Hodges. I know the territory down here is just god awful, but then again, Africa is not too, super developed. Oh no, the whole American League Congress uh, economic debate. Oh, we actually have debate in 1949? Holy crap. Oh, just in case, build this up too. That's going to be super, super important. And build up a lot of this too. There you go. The Holy League's Congress has to be the most politically divisive climate in North American history, as each representative seems to have their own ideological beliefs and agendas. Nowhere else is this more prevalent than in the economic debate, something that news reporters and journalists were uh, spinning themselves in circles going over. It would be even more confusing had it not been that politically similar politicians have, co have to come together to represent their basis as a unified front in the debate. The reformers who wish to change or even get rid of the distributist economy to something more favorable to their practice. Their moderates are fine with the current setup and wish to continue Philip's old system. While the hardliners want to centralize the economy, some are even going so far as to wish for a type of feudalism with American characteristics. Oh, wow. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. What do we get with this? Let's see. The Inquisition's America. Hardliners. 
the radicals, the knight. American feudalism, extra ecclesiasm nulla salus. Strength in the Inquisition, blessed are those who hunger after righteousness. Steady as she goes with Charles Coughlin, the beloved disciple, towards a holy America, reviving America first. A test of faith, blessed are the pure in heart. Back from the brink, ooh. The Savior, who's the Savior? <gasps> Joseph Kennedy? What? In a military coup? Um... Damage of garrisons goes down. Oh my goodness, a mil military first state. Um, victory of the reformers. The realist Alfred Smith. The worker days dawn. A better society. A fair. Oh, my, I'm sorry. I, I gotta choose one of these ways. How do you get back from the brink? Sturdy as she goes. America first with this stuff. Radical. No one expects the American Inquisition. Jesus, what the heck? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, we're national populists, so it seems like the hardline approach seems like the best way to go, maybe. Uh, I guess we'll go, maybe go that one. But Charles Coughlin, I mean, when's the last time we had Charles Coughlin actually do this? Oh. Mm. You know what? If we're going to go crazy, we're going to go crazy. I spell it promoted. Oh, I just I don't know, man. I I don't even know at this point. We got plenty to build, but oh my goodness, I love the tanks. Ah, this reminds me of playing as Iberian Union, uh, or even the Italian Empire in TNO, where you're just running around with our little tanky boys, and they're like, "Yay, let's go shoot some people in Africa." <laughs> go shoot the Africans. The Holy League, a Holy American League Congress government debate. Oh, hello, Norwegian Kostya. Oh, okay then. While the economic debate was heated, both the reporters and even the politicians within the Congress could not have seen the heat from the governmental debate coming. As the debate first began, the first speaker, a woman from the reformist faction, walked down to the podium. They would not last but a minute until someone believed to be a representative from the Inquisition side of the hardliners throws a shoot at them. While the shoe missed, it caused a great uproar, leading to the female representative being thrown out of the Congress. Regardless, the reformists are championing a campaign in favor of decentralization, with some supporting the old Federalist model, while others seeking almost anarchistic... Uh, approach to control. The moderates want to return th to that of a trusted system like that the AUS had, with more or less populism depending on the person within the faction. The hardliners are seeking a strong government with centralized control, so they can now give power to either their noble knights or that of the Inquisition's never ending hunt for heretics. You know what? I just thought something else. We could go with the Inquisition. What if we instead choose one from each faction? Like, we went with the hardliner first. Let's go to the moderate side now, and then we'll choose decentralization. I want to see if we can really just screw this up. How badly can we mess up here? Not badly enough. That is the correct answer. Thank you for answering, guys. Thank you very much. We still have nukes. We have no strategic bombers deployed, but that's okay. Are you guys done? I know supplies are not great here, but... <gasps> JFK wounded! Oh, no! The Holy American League Congress Inquisition Debate. The debate has shifted to the rather controversial subject of the Inquisition. Many of the Empire's citizens live in fear of the Inquisitors, and with good reason. The intense and brutal punishments dished out to those who found guilty who those found guilty of heretical behavior or thought are now infamous. For this region, the reformers argue for doing away with what they deem to be an outdated, immoral, and unnecessary practice. Meanwhile, the moderates advocate for toning down the excesses of the Inquisition while retaining the basic test of faith. In stark contrast to the other proposals, and much of the horror of the, most of their fellow party members, the hardliners call for strengthening the Inquisition and removing the limits to its power. Those would in fact give the Inquisitors free reign to hand out whatever punishment they please on whoever they please, but the hardliners nonetheless insist it is a necessary step in cleansing the Empire into a truly holy state more fit to bear the name of the Virgin. Now the Congress waits with bated breath to find out who should get their way. Inquisition will be no more. A better, fairer test of the faith, or unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Let's go with this one. It should be no more. We're going completely just crazy here with whatever we're doing. Can you beat these guys up? JFK, please, you have upgrades. Ah, more military police is very good. Get some more uh, recon, I suppose. Why not? Any upgrades here, perhaps? South Carolina class. We love the South Carolinians. Sometimes they're a little crazy, but that's why we love them. As long as you're good and holy, though.
Oh, the Holy American League Congress, no majority. Oh boy, the Congress was unable to come to any majority, leading to a silent chaos within St. Mary's City. As crowds loyal to their own faction begin dispersing into the city and back to the transportation, the police are already reporting multiple attacks between the groups. The military is rapidly moving back to barracks outside the city limits or to reinforce checkpoints. While on the countryside, nearly right after the announcement, partisan groups' activities emboldening, with some even marching around in broad daylight inside the congressional chambers, members of the Congress who are willing to form a unity government are racing some kind of agreement. This isn't good. Oh boy. Or the chaos in St. Mary's City. With a deadlock seeming to not be any anytime soon. Chaos is everywhere. Most prevalent inside the capital, the nation is on the verge of collapse as a mass exodus of people are leaving the city as conditions rapidly devolve with gangs and paramilitaries fighting each other in the slums of the city. The military is marching on the city as their fight continues to the barracks, proved to be a regrouping action rather than a true route. The military commanders are attempting to install Joseph P. Kennedy Jr. as our regent, their motives seeming only to be inspired by a desire for order within the nation. With word spreading from the frontline reporters of the hardline Inquisition units firing on civilians loyal to any group rather than their own in Lynch gangs from both the reformers and moderates seeking each other out. The military seems to be driving almost reckless advance or straight to the center of the city right through the ideologically inspired groups. The isolated members of the Congress who haven't fled are attempting to hash out an emergency deal. Frontline reporters are trying to decipher what has happened. Man, Catholicism is really breaking down here. He's been sworn as Auk Regent. The Cavalier Ideal. Congress has reached a deal creating an eternal regency under United Government. Uh, get Regency of Compromise. Chaos has overtaken America. Has collapsed. Currently, this is only for flavor. However, full content will come at a later release of this United States. Holy, how long is this going to go on? Like, I'm not complaining. Like, I'm actually really enjoying this. I hate the lag and all, but I'm really enjoying this, like, campaign. So, as long as you guys are enjoying it, showing up and watching and having a good time with me, that's what matters. But, holy cow, I gotta go down this route again someday, but you gotta remind me of this. But, Kennedy, why not? Why not? I didn't imagine you'd be like this. But Jesus Christ is still our king. <sighs> Gotta love it. Back from the brink. It is a dark day for the Empire of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Congress has devolved into utter chaos and deadlock while in the Ark Regent. Uh, the Holy Mother are surely looking down from the heavens with shame. A solution must be found to bring the Empire back from the brink of death. Military coup in America? The Savior. In a surprising turn of events, Joseph Kennedy and the National Cavaliers have ascended to take the reins of power, with Kennedy's coup ending the indecision and bureaucracy that threatened to ruin the Virgin Mary's empire. It is fitting that he has been proclaimed the Savior, for he is the only one able to keep this nation holy. My goodness, this is... I, I'm not sure what to say anymore, but we need to do the Guadalupe and Empire as well. Wait, we just go straight up Annex War Goals against... Oh, we... I didn't have to manually justify on these people. Oh, but then again, we didn't have to manu manually justify on most of these guys anyways, but... Okay. Okay. I'm okay with that. I am totally a okay with that. Let's go, guys. Let's go, 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 go. Yeah, you don't have enough tanks to really make much of a difference here, but you guys keep going, just in case. Yeah, this is... It's a crazy campaign, not gonna lie. Kaiser Redux, I mean, I swear, man, it is. Not wacko, but it's it's nuts. Joseph Kennedy, the savior. Which is something I don't think I would have ever said. But that's alright. And I'm still not done with us. I keep forgetting about this. Ah, silly me. Silly, Mr. Mocha Lover. Look at all that. We're getting more population back than we're actually losing. Just because of the non-core manpower plus 56% thingy. Jesus Christ. Blessed be his name. Oh, how is it coming to France? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense if we're beating them up anyways. Uh, I think I'm going to... Mm, I don't want to really nerf them, but... The Golden Pact has not like the Golden Circle, right? From like uh, the whole Confederacy thing. Nope. Nope. Keep going, guys. We're doing a great job. Well, really, if the coming of France capitulates... Oh, we need the Socialist Republic of Italy to go as well. All right. Not bad. We actually have nine nukes. Okay, Togoland Commune. Goodbye, Togoland. I can't believe you're only level seven. I mean, at this point, you're just becoming a trickster, as well as an engineer and an organizer. Please keep going, guys. Keep going, 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 going. Do not let up. Do not let the enemies go. Oh, Tunisia's gone. I love a night in Tunisia. The safe. Oh, wait. Look at that. We have other ideologies here. How dare you. Oh, we overran them. Oh, I love overrunning enemies. Enemies of Christ need to perish. Wow, that is a lot of guys down here. 
Oh, we actually lost a convoy. Why would we have convoys over there? Yeah, don't do that, guys. That's a bit, that's a bit nuts. You're a bit crazy. Look how laggy it is. I'm going to delete some more divisions after this episode, too. I, even between, like, fade and fade outs, I still delete some of the, ep some of the episodes. Some of the, the divisions, the fall of Paris, oh boy. Just because it's so laggy. Uh, actually, off, off the screen, I'm probably going to make India and Ching trying to kill each other, too, just because they need to kill each other, too. So... Oh, wow, that is a big encirclement. It's not the most impressive I've seen ever. But you know what? It's my encirclement. Military first state. Kennedy and the National Cavaliers have proved that the military is the only instrument keeping the Empire holy and just. It is our sole defense against sin and heresy, and therefore, it shall receive preferential treatment and attention, being the center of everything. The Empire of Our Lady of Guadalupe will be a military first state, using guns to keep in God's grace. So, as supplies worse, more, even more non-core manpower, and to limit the aftermath of the coup, though. Following the deadlock that nearly tore our holy empire to shreds, it was one man who stopped the chaos. That one man who brought focus back, even if it was for a split second to Congress. It was the one man who saved the empire. That man was Joseph Kennedy Jr., the savior of America, Arc Regents Kennedy. The spy had just come into power a short time ago, has already began making sweeping reforms to the empire. Him and his national cavaliers have started to transform the empire into what amounts to be a thinly veiled junta. The holy American League has effectively become a rubber stamp party and already rubber stamp body. Those who oppose the will of the Arch Regent are silenced or worse. The military, long and neglected part of the Empire, has become the central focus of Kennedy's reign. Despite his progress in stabilizing St. Mary's City and the capital, the rest of the nation is still in chaos from the deadlock. Unless the Arch Regent can restore order to the entire nation, he may just be removed himself. Long live the Savior. It sounds like we can get cooed. How long does this go? Oh my goodness, look at their party popularity. Oh my goodness, that is not the bueno. Oh no, no, no. Solidify control. Why did my voice go to turn it like this? Wait, what do you mean 1%? Seriously, what the heck? Oh, are we a 13 Democrats now? Oh. Oh, boy. That's not good. But how many men have we lost? We lost... That's not too bad. 400,000. Moscow Corps lost that much. And the Third Internationals lost 21 million. Uh, maybe I deleted too many of France's divisions. I don't think it was France's divisions. I, I, did delete a, I did delete a lot of both sides. So, I mean... They started off fairly balanced, I would say. But still. Whatever. Whatever. I'm kind of more interested in the story than how we're actually winning here, so. Nigerian Free State? Oh, give us your population. Give us your sons and daughters? That sounds kind of weird. Eh, whatever. Nigeria. Who are you? Why are you independent? Oh, it's going to take so long to kill out the Bornu Emirate. Oh, who is this? Wait. Lisbon? What? What What the heck happened over here? Oh. Okay, well, whatever. Philippoli. There you go, my friends. Military state first. Or military first state. And then the Regency. Do we need to do that one? No. Oh, but if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. Actually, that was this one. Oh, boy. A government of compromise? Well, if you want to read about this one as well. Which actually would have been pretty good to get, actually, instead. Because uh, I like the less damage of garrisons, even though we already get so much non-core manpower. But, is military rule all that different? The military rules everything in all radio stations in the capital broadcast for other armed forces. But is anything really that different from Carol's rule? Businessmen, pastors, and the tired skeptics who now wish for nothing more than to buy a grill and retire believe there's no difference. Oh boy. The same government authority, same beliefs in Catholicism, albeit with a few more soldiers in the streets, and more commendation bars on the officers. The army or Carol, who can tell the difference? We just get more war support and manpower? Alright then. Well, restoring order, my friends. We must restore order. Although our leadership crisis has been solved, the wider empire is still in flames. Outside the capital, most of our territory is on the brink of secession or collapse. If we are to truly secure our rule and keep this whole nation very holy, we must restore order to the empire. But the question is, can our people be calm with promises, or will blood have to be shed? Oh boy. Oh boy. Hopefully we don't need too much blood for this, but that's okay. 5% more knockout manpower? Very good. As we are literally storming through Africa. And was this one supposed to give us an event? I think it might. No, it doesn't. Okay, okay. Blessed are the peacemakers, though. Despite the chaos of the death of the Ock Regent, and the subsequent Congress, the turmoil is over, and a new rule is in place to keep holy the Virgin Mother's empire. There is peace and harmony in this empire, and the Lord is pleased. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. As it should be. Uh oh. Ah, uh, convoys. Enemies of the Lord, they be donned. Seriously, we're doing a really good job. Keep going, guys. I'm surprised. Surprise, surprise, I'm surprised supply hasn't been so bad yet. We're we still making. Oh, oh, we're out of. Oh my gosh. 
Um, we took over Cuba to get as much supplies for this as possible. We can do that one, I guess, too. Keep going, guys. Oh, JFK, you're just kind of hanging out? That's fine. You know, sometimes you just got to hang out. You just got to have a good time. Because now we're probably going to invade the rock. Not the rock, like Hawaiian rock. Not the actor. Which would be very cool, but... I don't think he's born yet. Hmm... Oh, actually, uh, we're not even over here. Anyways. We're going to go to the Mediterranean. That kind of sucks. Almeria? Algeria, too. If that's the case, then we'll probably do this as well. I did cut down on a lot of uh, enemy planes and such, or just, you know, planes that we've gotten in uh, the past couple of wars. And give me some actual naval bombers. Ooh. Wow, I've made a lot of naval bombers without even doing anything. 600, 700, very nice. This way our ships will be protected from enemy planes, which is extremely important. Jag Bob. Well, welcome, Jag Bob. Keep going. Oh, look at that. We're doing some serious damage, Reno. Convoys go burr. Nice. Oh, we actually sunk four destroyers, too. Yeah, I think the Commune of France is kind of dead. Not going to lie. Beautiful. Keep going, guys. Keep going. I love the infantry. Matthew Ridgeway is a great general. Wow, we're just destroying whatever's in here. If we were to throw our own guys in here... Oh, we sunk six subs. Look at that. But just faster click and read than actually for them to pop up and tell us what has actually died. Convoys. Convoys. Two subs. Cameroon's gone. Good. Ace Spider promoted. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Convoys. Co what type of flag is that? I can't even tell. They still haven't capitulated, but they're still barely winning over here, too. So, naval invading for them was a really smart idea since they probably killed off all their ships, but you know, whatever. Whatever. And we've almost made it to Cairo. Oh, crap. That's not good. Hold on. Oh, there goes the Commune of France. I think the war's over now. I'm glad I looked down here. Go, go, go. And when's this? Oh, oh, it's going to be done in 10 days. It, you, you see how laggy it is. Holy crap. It is incredibly laggy. Oh, I'm going to lose so much stability once this war is over. <laughs> by annexing everything I can. Of course, I will split this up. Split up Europe. And just the third international with, you know. What you can get. I'm not going to take most of Europe. Since, obviously, we didn't do a lot of it in Europe. But... The more important thing is I will take a little bit just so that we don't have to naval invade and try to break into Russian Europe. Ugh, that's disgusting. But we'll do have a nice little peace conference too. So, Come on, come on. How many more days? Six days. Good lord. Save our souls. Oh, are you guys done? No, you ain't. Keep going. Who owns this? The Suez International Zone? I don't think so, son. I really don't think so. Oh, slovakia has gone. Huh. Uh-oh. We find him fleets all around here. Nice. Yeah, I definitely gotta delete more divisions and make China and India kill each other off. Alright, and we were about to restore order. With the next focus, my friends. Blessed are the peacemakers. Very good. Actually, does this one give us an event? Yeah, it does. Question of restoring order. Oh, well, look at that. Well, the capital has been calmed and order restored, the rest of the country is still in chaos. We need to do something or we risk oh, uh, falling apart as one city is the fool's idea of control. Thus, the discussion has grown upon our leaders and the peacemakers underneath them. Should we just shoot everyone as the countryside is full of hostile forces? Or, the views people, although highly controversial, as if it's even possible on the ground with our troops, is strongly opposed by the more calm-headed and peaceful aspects of our leadership. Those within this faction of our leadership think that as a Catholic nation, the word of God must be first used to restore order. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword? Peace shall be a weapon of choice. Um... Peace? Do we... I mean, blessed are the peacemakers, that makes more sense. Uh, we'll go with that one. If, it, if we get cooed, like, that's not really good. I don't want to end up in a third American Civil War, for the love of God, please. I'm not interested in doing that in this campaign. <laughs> please? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, it's just like you. Okay. Woo. 
Give me that one division. Come here too. We'll take out Sua soon enough, but still. Oh, I'll watch out. The Communist of Luxembourg is gone. And then the SRI is probably going to die here too soon. Wow. Put you guys here, and then really split you up. Oh, that's my half. There you go. Niger's gone again. I'll pop right there too. Because we, oh, we don't own the Gibraltar region. That sucks, yeah. Um, whoa, atomic bomb in the Eastern Rhineland. Whoa. All right, well, whatever. They're dead. The good Lord said kaboom, and he saw that it was holy. Now, they can just take out the SRI really quickly. Then we'll probably end the episode once we get the sauce focus done. Oh, man, that is not good. That is not good. We could do war propaganda, but we get more weekly stability. Floating fortresses are nice. Carrier battle groups, my friends. Carrier battle group arenas. Yeah, Russia's going to be a little bit of a problem to take out, but that's pretty much expected. Man, they are, they're just going straight through these guys. Even the Bavarians aren't done yet. London is still in Russian hands. Uh oh, it's lagging so hard. Please don't crash. Please don't crash. Please don't, please don't crash. Oh. What the heck? What the heck? What's going on? Who are you? Occupied France. Edouard de Vaux. Wait. What? Okay, we got the peace deal. So I'm going to do this off screen and then we'll look at the last event together before we end the episode. Alright, my friend, but blessed are the peacemakers, our leaders, all breathe a collective sigh of relief. For the work is paid off. Today the Empire is saved and we are now the peacemakers, those who stood in the face of disaster and emerged victorious. The Empire shall survive 10,000 years with the lessons we have learned from this crisis, for they shall be called the children of God. <clears throat> Which get 20% more defense, better consumer goods, and plus 30% entrenchment speed, and the restoration of the legation cities. The Russian national states recently occupied the former cities of the international mandate for the Chinese concessions, but has decided to restore power to the legation's council. As a nation with concessions and influence in China, we've been granted a seat on the restored council. This time, many nations that have been excluded from getting voting rights before have had them returned. Great! Cool, and let us finish this campaign. Not, well, we're not finishing the campaign. I think the next episode might be the finish, or even two episodes around. But we will do Guadalupean Empire. With the beachhead established in the former Grand Colombia, we now cast our eyes to the south and east to the fulcrum point of José de San Martín's dream of La Plata and the crown jewel of the Portuguese hegemony. Now the great Amazonian's Goliath attempt to moralize in the manner of the former masters has been met with unsatisfactory results and all the while the countless wars of nationalism and cynicalism have left the south beyond the Andes a smoldering devastation. This cannot be tolerated any longer. And just in case, yeah, and, uh, when we begin the next episode, I'm going to have like no stability probably, so it is what it is. And Pax Philippica. Oh, Guatemala. Oh, oh, we're going to kill our ally off. Okay. Well, we might take him out anyways, but... One land, one faith, one people, one God. This is the dogma of the American covenant. Men and women of every race, scholars and sages, officers and office clerks, cab drivers and clergymen, all united under our singular sacred purpose. The divine unalienable rights passed down to us by the life and teachings of Jesus Christ, among which include life, piety, and the pursuit of happiness. And we get all these cores? Holy crud. Look at all these cores we can get. My goodness, that looks like a lot of fun, but I will see you tomorrow in the next episode in which we must make sure that American dominance continues around the world no matter what as we spread the holy word. Thanks for watching, my friends, and have a great, great holy rest of your day.